Thanks, Darren. Excellent dump. Well, for strategy fans and armchair generals, there aren't many games that rival the depth of the Total War series. And last year's game, Shogun 2, was definitely one of the best. But now there's a standalone expansion for it called Fall of the Samurai. In Kyoto, the Emperor continued as divine head of state. But real power was held by the Tokugawa Shogunate. Strategy games typically come in one of two flavours. There's real time, like Age of Empires, or turn based, like Civilization. But the Total War series has made a name for itself by smushing the two flavours together into a delicious, chocolatey vanilla swirl sprinkled with a healthy dose of history. Mmm, delicious histories, chocolate sprinkle swirls. Yes, and while the original Shogun 2 was set way back in the 16th century, Fall of the Samurai fast forwards 300 years into 19th century Japan. Guns and cannons are everywhere and the influences of foreign powers are growing, triggering the Boshin Civil War. As you begin your campaign, you need to pick a side, either fight to restore the Emperor's rule over Japan or maintain the Shogunate. Whichever side you choose, the way of the samurai is dying out and now it's guns that rule the battlefield. Well, Bajo, while gun units have replaced archers, they're typically slow to reload and can be decimated by charging samurai or cavalry. Yeah, that's true, Darren, and it makes for an interesting mix of units and strength strategies, doesn't it? Affirmative. It's kind of a happy middle ground between the gun and artillery units of Total War Empire and Napoleon, with the more popular sword, spears and bows of Total War Medieval and Shogun. And it looks epic as thousands of units line up and start taking shots at each other. I loved how those clouds of smoke hang around and just slowly roll across the battlefield. But you do need a powerful, relatively new computer to run this game on the higher graphics settings. I was also quite impressed by the enemy AI. Enemy armies line up to meet yours and do their best to flank you with cavalry and cause chaos in your lines. It was quite a challenge for my own AI subroutines. But as with every Total War game, the battle isn't just won on the battlefield. That's just a small portion of the war effort. Oh, affirmative. The real fight is one of healthy trade, careful resource management and thought out military campaigns. Oh, and diplomacy is more important than ever. Allying with your fellow supporters of the Emperor or Shogunate is essential since your victory depends on which side controls the most provinces. It's not just about you anymore. Yeah, I really liked that. It's just, it gives you such clear enemies and allies, which makes it feel much more like a full-scale war. And if you're not doing some smart planning and diplomacy, then you're not going to stand a chance in the battlefield. Oh, indeed. And it's important to always keep an eye on your finances and taxes. Without a healthy economy, your provinces will soon begin to riot. Not to mention you won't be able to recruit new units and further develop your provinces. Yes, and every military unit costs a big chunk of gold to maintain, so you can't afford to simply leave armies lying around guarding each province. It's a real juggling act to keep your economy moving along, your military strong and your people safe and happy. Yes, but that's all old news for the series. On the new side of things, you can now develop railways to move your armies around much quicker. Usually it takes a lot of turns to march anywhere, so using railways and your navy to move around is essential. Navies are also significantly more useful now thanks to their ability to bombard land targets. Charging my broadside! They can cripple enemy infrastructure or simply chip away at armies in their range. In previous games you could almost ignore building a navy, but now you do so at your own peril. Yes, and if you go into battle with a fleet nearby, you can call in support with some devastating naval bombardment. It's pretty overpowered, but if you have it, you can take on armies twice your size. I also found the naval combat much more satisfying, and that's mostly because of this new third-person mode that lets you put you directly in control of a ship or an artillery unit's guns and aim them yourself. It just puts you that much more into the action, I thought. Yeah, it's fantastic. So let's wrap this up, Badge. Well, personally, I prefer Shogun 2 for its wonderful walls of flaming arrows flying through the sky, and I just like the units and the theme of that game a bit more. Personal preference aside, this is a very solid standalone game and almost as good in its own right. I'm giving 8.5 out of 10 rubber chickens. For me, scheming up clever strategies to conquer that campaign map is as satisfying as ever. I really love this. I'm giving it 9. Oh, and just to be clear, Spawnlings, this is a standalone expansion pack, so you don't need to own the original game to play it. Hmm.